Okay, we made it to the end of yet another week, right? Oh my gosh, I'm telling you. The fall like hit us like a ton of bricks in Minnesota this week. So last week was like muggy and raining a couple, what, more than a couple days. The beginning part of this week was rainy, but it was always kind of cold, blustery cold. So the fall has definitely landed right into our lap. So here we are. Hi. Hi, October. And guess what? Next week, the whole week, I am putting on another masterclass. So please come and join us. Um, you can sign up uh, at learntoloveyourstory.com. Uh, the pop-up will come up. You can click the link there. And that just gets you to sign up for the Facebook group called Take Back Your Life. So it's a private Facebook group and I just do my lives right there. And they're hour long, free classes, five, five hour long, free classes, each um, that corresponds with one of the courses and my online courses that I offer at learntoloveyourstory.com. So if you are interested at all in learning how to love your story, how in the midst of a big fat mess of a life that you can love your life anyway, then I would join the Facebook group, Take Back Your Life, because you may learn something. It's, you know, basically the same material that I put into the courses, um, just in a condensed version for you. So self-care, self-awareness, self-compassion are three of them. Um, also kind of learning about social conditioning you know, like the rules of culture and society and religion and family and how that impacts how we think about our lives. I wrote a big, long blog about that this week. If you are interested, um, it, basically the root of all our problems is our programming and conditioning. Like we should all over ourselves. <laughs> I should be like this. I should be like that. And as soon as you hear that word should, you should know. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, it's a good indication or rumble strip that you're thinking about what someone else's definition of what it is that you can, will want to be. And man, that's where a lot of our human suffering comes from is when we get caught up in these scripts, roles, rules, social programming, we try to be the person we think we're supposed to be instead of just loving on the person that we are. In fact, we're really hypercritical of the person that we are. Do you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> so don't shit on yourself. And uh, yeah, I talked a little bit about that both um, in the blog that I wrote this week. If you want to go over to learn to love your story .com. I also I think the vlog this week really captures that, too, in that we were talking about, um, I have a case of the, I know betters. So, t so tell me in the comments right now, cause I know you're there. Like, what is that thing that you keep catching yourself doing that you, then you say, I know better. Why am I doing this again? <laughs> I know better. I'll tell you what mine is. So mine, and I'm still like, I'm, I'm digging, I'm digging with my therapist and, my, my journaling and my soul searching, but I, I have kind of a point with my six-year-old where I lose it and uh, I get a little ragey, you know, I get a little hangry, depends, right, on the situation. Um, and she's six, guys, so like, no, it's not her. I mean, she's obnoxious sometimes because she's six, but uh, doesn't deserve her mother losing her shit on her. So anyway, so that's, that's where I know better. Like I do know better, but there are just times where it sneaks up on me and I can't, haven't quite grasped it, but I use the very same stuff that I teach you guys. Um, so I'm trying to stay compassionately self-aware about it. Like I notice it as soon as it happens, I try to shut it down as soon as it happens. And I try really hard not to be hard on myself about it because that doesn't help. Um, if I pull out the whip and start whipping myself, I'll probably, you know, just find myself with another case of the I know betters, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, these are tough though. And, and honestly, the best way to get 
a hold of it is with that compassionate self-awareness, which is the what I call the superpower in my online courses. It is really the most important to first skills in order to be able to do the rest of the stuff. So, you know, looking at programming and conditioning, like the rules of life or shooting on yourself is hard to do. Um, if you believe that stuff, you know, if you're really hard on yourself cause you're not mustering up. So you have to have self-compassion and self-compassion is a hard skill. It's not one that we teach well, honestly, to our kids or learn for ourselves. Now, if you're a woman, you more than likely do have some really great compassion skills, however, meaning when we're talking about caring for others, you got that, like you've got that down. If I ask you, you know, how to dial into your partner, you know how to do that. If I ask you how to read a room in a boardroom, you know, like emotionally, she's there, he's there, and this guy over here is about to lose all of us. So, if you've got a skill to be compassionate, guess what? I can teach you how to wire that in to self-directed compassion or self-compassion. So you don't have to really learn new skills so much as learning new uh, rewiring in your brain. And that is why I'm adding group coaching. And that starts on October 26th. So if you're interested at all in having me face to face helping coach you on using these skills for the 20 weeks of that program, then head over to Take Back Your Life, the private Facebook group that I have, so that you can watch the five modules, see if this is something that fits for you, um, and register over the course of the next week so that you can be with us in about a week and a half as we get started. Each month, I'll kick it off um, talking about what the content of that month will be about. Um, and, and helping people kind of align some goals around that particular content area. So first one is self-awareness, mindfulness. We'll be talking about like, hey, where am I falling down on that? Where am I doing okay on that? I was just listening to um, We Can Do Hard Things, which is uh, Glennon Doyle's um, podcast, new podcast. Um, and she's on it with her wife, Abby Wambach, and her sister, um, and she calls her sister, so I always forget her name. I think it's, oh, what is it? It starts with an A. I know it does. Amanda. I think it's Amanda, but I'm not, don't quote me. Anyway, I was just listening to her talk about, um, you know, it, it, being really cognizant, self-consciously or self-compassionately um, aware of when you're falling down. And she was falling down recently. She had just sent her, her kid off to, um, college, her, her oldest. And uh, she was just kind of doing one of those things that we all do where we're like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm totally fine. I'm busy. I'm fine. I'm fine. But you're not fine. <laughs> and so um, she was kind of disclosing in her, I think it's her most recent um, podcast that she's going back to doing meditation, like as a practice, because she knows that that's really something that centers her. So self-awareness these are the kinds of things that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about why it's a superpower. Why am I holding this? I'll just put this down. Sorry. Um, yeah, the, she she'll you know she was saying that that's what she was going to go back to, and that is that first um, that the first course in my whole set of modules, and the first one that we'll jump into on October twenty sixth. But you get to see me uh, at the beginning of the month when I pitch it off and then once a week and I will work with the groups to really make these skills work for them um, and learn to love your story. Like really get out of the muck of feeling like, you know, it's just, I wake up, I go to work, I do the things, I go to bed, I wake up, I go to work, I do the things, I go to bed, I hit the weekend, I veg out, you know, some variation on that theme where you're really just not feeling it. You're not in the bliss of your life. You're not feeling content. And I get it. Like COVID kicked our butts, but mostly what COVID did was it was a disruptor to just the status quo. It was a disruptor to these programs and conditions that we have about how life should be. We were shutting on ourselves. Ha ha ha. So when something like that happens, when a life transition of that magnitude shows up, 
what happens to us is we kind of get this like what psychologists would call a little bit of an existential crisis, but we're kind of hitting that, that place of like, what, what's the whole point of this? Like, what's the whole point? Right. Uh, I get up, I go to work and I come home. Like, what's the whole point with this? We had to make major adjustments for some of us. That was very painful. Um, and we're still reeling from that. And you're like, what's the whole point of this? Like what? So another pandemic might come because the Delta variant is here. Like what? So I want to help people understand there is a way to live with a mindset. We call it a growth mindset in psychology, but with this open mindset that allows you to live in a state of flux happily. What? Yes, I'm, I'm serious. You can live your life in such a way that it won't matter what challenge comes your way, what suffering comes your way, what new life transition comes your way. You'll pivot and you will still be loving your whole life. What? So that I'm so excited. I'm so, I, I think that's why I was holding this cup because I, I want to talk about We Rise. Oh yeah, it's on Facebook. So I'm sorry, it's going to be backwards. We Rise by Lifting Others. I want to lift others up and what better time, right? Like I think we all could use a minute, right? <laughs> and so I have like this method that I've been using forever. It's, it's a method that a lot of therapists like me use. It's been successful for about two decades with my clients. It's not therapy. It's just the education side, but it's, it's a set of skills taught in a certain order that help you to have that open mindset so that it really doesn't matter what comes your way. You'll just deal with the next thing in front of you and let, and you can really enjoy and love your life that way. So I, I can't think of anything better to share with the earth than this. I want to hit a broader audience. So learn to love your story is all about that. It's just about helping to lift all of us up by helping you have a skill that I know works um, and really is what COVID highlighted that we all need. Think to yourself about the people that did a little better than those that didn't. What's the common denominator that you saw? Now, in the front end, and I think that there were a lot of us that have been through some traumas that have a little bit of a superpower in that uh, we were kind of prepared for the shoe to drop our entire life. So the fact that the pandemic came, we were just like, told you, told you the earth was going to end. <laughs> like, there is a little bit of that that happened up front, but that isn't something that would help you pivot through the whole thing. But the people that generally did better, do better in things like this, are the people that are able to just, you know, fluidly, okay, I'll adjust. Oh, that didn't work enough. I'll just adjust again. They're not married or holding tightly to these ideas of who and what they should be, right? Now, as a life transition expert, I can tell you that th th that's the difference between those that are resilient during major life transitions, say a loss, major loss of some kind, um, even positive life transitions, marriage, buying your first house, uh, kids, um, midlife, right? I can tell you that when we go through transitions, those that are resilient are those that can pivot, those that have this change growth mindset, and those that are tend towards wanting to have control, wanting to have a plan and a plan B and a plan C and a plan C1 and a plan C2. Like, do you know these people? I know you know these people. They don't do as well. And there's a lot of us out there that are in that category. And these skills that Learn to Love Your Story teaches, these will help you become the resilient people that you're seeing pivot through this that are like, yeah, I had to work from home. Wasn't that big a deal? Yeah. Now I'm deciding, I think, I think I'll just work from home a couple of days and go back into the office a few days. And it's like no sweat off their back. And you're just like pulling your hair out, pulling your hair out because you're like, what is happening? I, I am struggling. <laughs> I am struggling heavily. How is it possible that these people are not struggling? Well, because they have these resiliency skills of a growth mindset. And it's totally teachable, totally learnable. And the best way to learn that, we rise when we lift up others. It's when we do it in a group of people. So I'm starting with women in midlife. I want to wrap around them because I know that this group of people is our backbone. 
These are the moms raising our kids. Um, there's more of them that are teaching our kids in the education system. There's more of them in the healthcare system, you know, helping us when we're ill with COVID or, you know, fearful of and all of the things, right? They are the ones that are the caretakers, it, you know, for good or for not good. That is still a gender role that percentage wise, you see more women be um, the family caretakers, even if they're balancing in work as well, right? I want to focus on this group of people because if I can lift that group of people, I know that that particular group of people can lift more people in their spheres. So for me, it's like, where am I going to hit most of the bang for my buck? It's this group of women. I can teach this stuff to anybody and anybody can go to learn to love your And all of this stuff is applicable to just humans. I mean, I guess if you're a dog, you might not be able to apply it, but if you're a human, you should be able to apply this stuff. So, um, I am focusing on this group in the group coaching. And so if you're a woman in midlife and you don't like your life, you're feeling tired, exhausted every day, and then wired at night watching, you know, like flipping through Facebook, can't fall asleep. And then you get up and the next day it's just like worse, right? You're the one that is carrying the load at home and did the most adjustments during COVID to figure out how you're going to work and teach kids at the same time. You're holding space for the worry that any at any moment, one of your family members might get this illness. And what does that mean? Right. Or somebody in your community. I want you to come to take back your life. It's free. Five days, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. every day next week. 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I will go through these five things for free. Just start there, right? If it's something that you really think, man, I could use some help with this, join us in group coaching. Join a group of women that are going to wrap around you to help you learn these skills, to commiserate because the work is hard sometimes, yep, and to have a a psychologist caliber educator, right? Like I'm not doing therapy, but I'm doing education. I have a doctorate in this stuff. I've been doing it for two decades. Please let me help you because I want us to do better. I want us to feel better and I know that we can. So join us next week for our masterclass. Either go to learn to love your click on the pop-up and join us that way, or just um, try to find the take back your life class, master class. That's a private Facebook group run by me um, on Facebook. And that is where all of this stuff takes place is right there on Facebook. So if you're seeing me via Instagram, you will have to go over to at learn to love your story or Natalie and Mar. Um, you can find it either way. And there we go. Join the group, take back your life. And I'm going to help you take back your life. Stay compassionate with yourself. Stay self-aware, but stay compassionate with yourself as you're learning new things. And you too can learn to love your story.